On September 3rd of last year, I made a video called, This is the lowest amount you need in order to live off of dividends. In the video, I talked about the benefits of investing in covered call ETFs, particularly funds like QYLD, RYLD, and XYLD, and how there's benefits to pursuing income investing over other types of investing in the stock market. I never would have imagined that that video would go on to receive as many views as it did and still continues to get. Obviously, one reason why it's done so well is because the idea of being able to live off of dividends is a really enticing thing to think about. Most people want to retire as soon as possible or at least not have to work in order to live or they'd prefer to be doing something else with their lives other than having to worry about paying the bills. I have other videos on my channel that touch on this same topic, but this one in particular really exploded in popularity and I like to think that it put covered call funds on people's radars who probably weren't even aware that these funds even existed. More recently though, people have been leaving comments on these videos asking for an update on these funds. With everything going on in the stock market this year and with the S&P 500 still currently being down more than 20% for 2022 according to Google, people are wondering if covered call funds are a good idea. If you've looked at the share price of these ETFs, you're probably aware that they've gone down since last September. So in today's video, I thought it'd be a good idea to take a look at the performance of these funds and see how well they've stacked up when compared to the market and we'll determine if covered call funds are still a good investment right now. There's two things that I really want to address about these ETFs in this video. The first part is their recent performance, and the second part is what I believe a lot of people have misconceptions about with these types of investments. Maybe I didn't make it clear enough in my original video, but if you're going to invest in QYLD, RYLD, or any other fund that uses a covered call strategy, you need to make sure that you understand what you can expect from these types of investments. So first things first, a lot of people have been concerned about the share price of these covered call funds. Since September 3rd of last year, we can see the share price of QYLD has dropped by a little over 23%, which is the largest drop out of the Global X covered call funds. If we look at RYLD, we can see that it's down about 18.5% since September 3rd, and if we look at XYLD, this ETF is a little over 14% down. Without a doubt, the most common criticism I've been getting from these videos recently is that covered call funds are just a bad investment because their share price has dropped this much since September of 2021. But if we actually compare them with the performance of the S&P 500, we can see that since September 3rd of last year, the index is currently down 15.5%. I guess I don't really understand why so many people don't seem to be aware of this fact. The reason why covered call funds are down a lot since September of 2021 is because almost everything is down a lot since September of 2021, with the exception of the energy sector as well as a handful of other stocks in the market. If you haven't noticed, XYLD has actually done better than the S&P 500 since last September. The S&P 500 is down about 15.5% and XYLD is down about 14%. It's a very small difference, but it's still doing just slightly better. But another thing I think a lot of people are ignorant about with these funds is the fact that share price isn't the main focus of these covered call ETFs. When it comes to these funds, it's all about dividends, which have and continue to be extremely high since their inception. If you're not familiar, these covered call funds buy a basket of stocks within a particular index and then they write call options on the same index. This is how they're able to pay these massive dividend distributions to shareholders on a monthly basis. So if you're going to determine if a covered call fund is a worthwhile investment, you absolutely need to factor in the dividends that it pays. Right now, QYLD is currently offering investors a dividend yield of 15.33% according to Seeking Alpha, which is one of the best dividend yields you can get in the stock market aside from exchange-traded notes. RYLD offers a dividend yield of 14.09%, which again is really stellar, and XYLD offers the lowest yield out of the three at 11.83%. But this would still be considered a very high yield by most people's standards. Because these yields are so high, whenever you're going to analyze the returns of these ETFs, you absolutely need to look at more than just the share price. You need to factor in the dividends along with the share price. And we can do this by using a drip calculator. This is a tool that will allow us to look at the total return for a stock or an ETF with dividends factored in. It's a really time-consuming thing to calculate a dividend fund's total return without a drip calculator, so they definitely come in handy in these situations. There's a few websites that offer this tool for free, but my favorite one is on DividendChannel.com. It's a tool that I use constantly in my videos, so if you've seen at least three or four of my videos at this point, you've probably seen me use it. But what we do is we enter a ticker symbol along with a start date and an end date, and it'll tell you the total returns for a stock or an ETF with dividends included. So let's assume we made a $10,000 investment into each covered call fund and the S&P 500 index and we'll compare them. We'll start with QYLD. If you would have invested $10,000 into this fund back on September 3rd of last year, you'd be down but slightly less than an S&P 500 index fund. With QYLD and if you would have reinvested your dividends, you'd be down 15.44% compared to 15.55% if you would have put that money into an S&P 500 index fund. You can see on the bottom I included the results of the same investment if you chose not to reinvest your dividends. Maybe you're living off of your dividends or you're using your dividends to invest in other stocks which is a common strategy with these ETFs. 
In that case, you'd be even slightly better off than the S&P 500. Now let's look at RYLD using the exact same investment amount and the exact same time period. The results are significantly better than just investing in an S&P 500 index. You'd be down 9.96% compared to 15.55% with the Spider S&P 500 ETF. Again, just like with QILD, not reinvesting your dividends would have left you in a slightly better position. Now let's look at XYLD. You can see that out of all the covered call funds, this one has been performing the best this year. It's only down about 7% compared to the index's 15.5%. XYLD does offer the lowest dividend yield out of the three funds, but it's held up the best and it's outperformed the S&P 500 by a very sizable margin so far. So to summarize, when we run the numbers, we can actually see that all three of these covered call funds have actually performed better since September of last year than SPY has. You actually would have made more money from them than if you were to just put your money into a stock market index fund. And don't get me wrong, I'm definitely not trying to bash index funds. I love index funds, I invest in index funds, and I even worked at Vanguard for a number of years, so I know they're a good investment. But as I've shown you, these covered call ETFs are not a terrible investment just because they're down since September, because nearly everything is down since September. But now I want to address the other part of these ETFs, because it looks like a lot of people have a misunderstanding of how covered call ETFs work and what they're intended to do. Covered call ETFs were never intended to outperform the market. That's not why anybody should be investing in these kinds of funds. Covered call ETFs do better than the market when the market's in bear territory, and it typically underperforms when we're in a bull market. As I've mentioned time and time again on this channel, covered call funds are for people who love high dividends. If you're the type of investor who loves to invest in things that provide heavy cash flow, then covered call funds are a great option. If you're retired and you're looking to earn a high amount of income each month without having millions of dollars invested in the stock market, then covered call funds are a great option. These investments can allow you to live very comfortably for less than half a million dollars invested. Right now, if you wanted to earn $4,000 a month from RYLD, you would need to invest $413,200 into it. I know that's a lot, but if you wanted $4,000 a month from Johnson & Johnson stock, you would need almost $1.9 million. With that being said, you shouldn't put every single penny you have into covered call funds or high-yielding BDCs or closed-end funds. Everyone should have at least some money invested in stocks or ETFs that still provide you with some growth. Dedicating a portion of your portfolio to a holding like SCHD will ensure your money doesn't just flatline. As prices go up over the years, you'll still have holdings in your portfolio that'll help bump up your dividend income to help accommodate these rising prices. It's always important to diversify your investments across industries, sectors, and investment types. But I keep seeing comments from people who seem to be under the impression that covered call ETFs are supposed to outperform the market under all conditions, and that's just not the case. Only with bear markets do they tend to outperform as we just saw. They're designed for people who love high-yield dividend investing, people who are retired, or for people who just want some higher yields in their dividend growth portfolios and really want to diversify. It's really important that you understand what covered call funds provide to their shareholders. With these things being said, we can see that covered call funds haven't stood out as being bad investments. In fact, they've fared much better than the market and significantly better than a lot of popular growth stocks this year. As of the making of this video, Tesla is still down more than 40% for the year. Advanced Micro Devices is down almost 50% for the year, and even Apple is still down over 22%, and yet covered call funds are performing better than a lot of these stocks in 2022. They're definitely not bad investments, you just need to understand what you're investing in, and you need to look at the track record that includes their dividends being put into consideration, not just the share price. And that's going to conclude today's video. Thank you all so much for watching, I really do appreciate it. If you found this video informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up below and also subscribe to the channel if you want to see more high yield dividend investing strategy videos. It would just let me know that there's enough people out there who want this kind of content and I'll continue to provide you all with that content. Alright, thanks again guys so much for watching and until next time, take care.